All right, so there are a bunch of questions about last night's show. So just, I mean, very quickly, I guess we'll talk about all of the, the main points for both of the shows. So Miro debuted, and it was a disaster, but he did win. <laughs> so he did significantly better than Retribution, both like in the ring and the finish. Because Retribution, they had a bad debut and they lost. He at least disaster is a little strong. Oh, dude, it was pretty much a disaster. I thought he, no. I thought he tore out his knee or tore out his ankle. I mean, Joey Janela almost got killed. Kip Sabian almost got killed. Miro was injured. I mean, dude, it was a disaster. And I heard the term "it was a disaster" from people in AEW. So, I mean, it is what it is. Sunny kiss looked good, I guess. <laughs> yes. So uh, Brody Lee beat Orange Cassidy. So Orange Cassidy's not going to do the whatever challenge. That made me sad, but what can you do? We have uh, the announcement the next week is Chris Jericho versus Isaiah Cassidy. We have <laughs> Tully Blanchard. I mean, dude's a great talker, but boy, we need somebody that could that could get out there and translate for him. It appears I could have done that. It, it seemed like that was a, if you were old enough to remember Tully Blanchard and his 20 minute time limit TV matches, you knew instantly for everybody well, I, else I they know were that. I mean, I it. watched them a couple of years ago when we were reviewing it, but all he did was he came out and said, "Normally there's a 60 minute time limit. Now it will be 20." Yeah. I was like, "For what? For That's is this going to be every week on TV? Some weeks on TV? I'm not even clear how often they're going to do this. But they're doing a 20 minute brush with greatness challenge if you beat them you beat them if you don't beat them it counts as a win for them i don't know why but they did we had <laughs> ivalice and thunder rosa they did not shoot on tv and then uh john moxley beat eddie kingston in a title match in the main event because of what happened uh with all of the well i shouldn't say all of at least i mean really I think there's only one other person scheduled for the show that wasn't there but that was all because of the uh, lance archer deal Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. So we're going to talk about the COVID situation in all of these companies. Let's get the news out of the way first. So here's what we know for sure. In CMLL, we have got a number of COVID positives, including Ultimo, Guerrero, and Bandito. This just came out yesterday, although, as Dave noted on Observer Radio last night, we had both heard these names for several days prior to the official announcement. We actually thought that they would announce it when they had their press conference. I think it was on Tuesday, but in fact, they only announced one positive test during that, and then they announced the rest of these here today. So Ultimo Guerrero and Bandito are off the 87th anniversary show. That is at least three names that were going to be on that show that are now off. I mean, I don't know how many you have to have to cancel a show, but we know it's more than three in... Uh, so that's CMLL. As far as AEW and NXT, this is what we can tell you. There are people in AEW and NXT that have tested positive. As was the case when WWE had their huge outbreak a while ago. We do not know how many people. They have made nothing public. There is one big difference between the two companies. And that difference is, if you test positive in WWE, they do not want you posting about it on any form of social media. They do not want you to announce it. In AEW, it appears they don't care. So, Lance Archer has gone public. He tested positive for COVID-19. Ben Carter tested positive, and he went public with it as well. In NXT, nobody has gone public with it. I believe because, as noted, they don't want you to. But here's the thing about both of these companies. And CML, well, I guess not CMLL. I don't know how things are in, in Mexico. But in America, because of the HIPAA laws, they cannot announce that you have tested positive for coronavirus without your permission. And not only can they not announce it publicly, let's say that let's say that Mike tests positive for coronavirus, okay? Legally, without consulting him, I cannot come on here on the air and say that Mike tested positive for coronavirus. It's a HIPAA violation. If if I get the information, etc. Now, that also means, 
And this is this is one of the reasons why, like, a lot of people don't know anything. And why a few days ago I asked people in NXT, like, there are rumors that there have been positive tests. Do you know anything? And I was told I've not heard anything about that. So the way it works in WWE, and I presume the way it works in AEW, but I don't know because I actually haven't asked. But in NXT, I can tell you this for a fact. Even internally, they cannot spread the word that somebody has coronavirus, okay? So I'm just going to throw out a name. In fact, I'll throw out a name that I know does not have coronavirus because they were on the show last night. Kyle O'Reilly, okay? Kyle O'Reilly clearly does not have coronavirus because he's now the number one contender and he won a match last night. If Kyle O'Reilly tests positive, and I'm, for example, Triple H, and I get all of the medical information, okay? Shawn Michaels, Road Dog, whoever else is on creative. I cannot tell Shawn Michaels, dude, Kyle is positive, and we need to come up with something new for TakeOver, okay? All I can say is, Kyle is not available for TakeOver. So, the people that are in charge of creative and etc., I mean, what they have is a list of who is available and who is not available. If you're not available, you may have tested positive for coronavirus. You may have asked for the day off to go to your son's basketball game. It could be anything. But internally, they are not legally allowed. I don't know exactly what happens all the time. But legally, they are not allowed to spread the word internally that somebody has coronavirus. So, I mean... It's all private. I mean, if you really want to go through and watch the show and say, okay, well, this guy wasn't there, this guy wasn't there, that guy wasn't there. I mean, you can go and do that, and you may be right in most cases. In some cases, you may not be right. But the only thing that we know for sure is that two people tested positive at AEW because they've gone public, and for various reasons, we have been led to believe that there have been other positives in AEW and there have been positives in NXT. But anything more than that, I mean, nothing's official. So that's the story. Real bad news for CMLL too, you know, and and, and bad news, I guess, for Ben Carter. You know, talk about a guy we just saw on Tuesday night. Uh, It looks like it's up on... The front page of the Wrestling Observer, Josh Nason, has posted it up a day after Lance Archer has said he'll be out a few weeks due to a positive COVID-19 test. Ben Carter tweeted Thursday that he has tested positive as well. So he said, uh, but hey, I feel fine. I guess I don't really taste my food as much as I normally do, but I feel fine for now anyways. So... Well, there you go. So 23-year-old Ben Carter, who uh, has been tearing it up on uh, Game Changer Wrestling and then has been showing himself off on AEW the last couple of weeks and is the type of talent uh, that is not going to stay unsigned by a major company for very, very long. Somebody is going to get their hooks into him. AEW's already obviously got a start to that, but looks like he is one of the names that... uh, uh, was rumored, or at least uh, the, the, is one of the names that is uh, d- looks like tested positive for AEW. So too bad there. And this person wants to know why did AEW dance around Archer being positive for COVID last night? It was really awkward the way they worded it by saying that he had come in contact with someone rather than outright saying he tested positive by his own admission. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. I mean. I think maybe people are maybe overthinking this a little bit too much where it may just have been I like, don't think it was a scandal. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it might have been that they didn't feel comfortable announcing it themselves. So they just said that he was in contact, and he had already tweeted that he had it. I mean, I know some people think this, they're trying to do this giant cover-up, but, you know, there ain't much of a cover-up when the guy goes public with it. And all you say on television was he came in contact with someone, which, in fact... He did come in contact with someone. That's how he said that he got it. So it wasn't even like they were lying, but it was kind of strange that he publicly announced it, but then on the show, they didn't say that he had it. They said that he had merely come into contact with someone. So I don't know. 